Hello everybody, it is so lovely to see you. I thought I would do a little quick live. Um, it is Speak Up Thursday and I'm loving the engagement with this. Um, lots of you gorgeous creatures are also part of Bronte's Summit today, so there's a lot of you doing amazing lives in there. But I thought I would do something that I like to do, which is to share the article that I had published this week. Was it this week? I have no idea because I am in Canada um, and I'm looking a little bit sleepy, so forgive me. It is 10 o'clock at night here, but I decided that I would make the most of the time that it is in Australia right now because, of course, when I wake up in the morning, you'll all be in bed. So I'm just going to read to you the article that I had published in Savannah East this week, which is called, Here's How to Know If You Are a Spiritual Leader and It's Not What You Think. And the reaction to this article has been amazing, and I'm so grateful to everyone who has shared it and commented and shared it around to their community because I think this is a conversation that is vital for us to be having and we really need to be aware of I guess the aspects of spiritual leadership that can be the less sexy side of things the stuff that we don't necessarily get trained for. It's about the willingness to get uncomfortable, to not be approved of and to not need to look externally. So it's a real, you know, extension of spiritual leadership. So it's part of everything that I do when I train women as spiritual leaders as part of the third level. But I put it all down, all my thoughts down, really based on an amalgamation of my experiences. Um, and I shared that, you know, even though I'm, I'm sharing a specific incident here, it's actually a reflection of a lot of different experiences for me. It's not just about, um, you know, one particular moment. This has been a, an experience of, of being pushed off that pedestal has, has really been a very powerful one for me and a really great and humbling one. And I was speaking earlier today about how humility is the great hallmark of a spiritual leader, because if if you don't have your humility properly in place then you know that fall from grace which will inevitably happen when people wake up they will often look to you as the messenger um, and see you as the cause of their problems they'll also see you as the cause of all the great things that are happening neither thing is true of course both those statements are false because it is the individual it is the person who is doing the work you know as they say until the you know, the, the teacher will appear when the student is ready. And it's the same in the opposite way. The, the, you know, the student will appear when the teacher's ready. And, and it really is a symbiotic relationship, but it's not based on the teacher doing magical things and unlocking someone. The, you know, the spiritual leader is not like got magic powers in them. They might be a little bit further along on the path. They might have got more devotion intact. They might have had more experience. But it, it, until a person is prepared to awaken, nothing outside of them is going to cause that awakening. It is always the willingness and the readiness of the student that will determine whether or not they have awakenings. So uh, let me jump in. Hello, Tammy. Lovely to see you. And I'm going to read this article to you because, you know, it's just really nice to be read to. So sit yourself down, grab a cup of tea if you want to. I've got my water and I'm going to begin. So I stared impassively at the screen. The woman's face looking back at me was full of rage. Just days before she'd been a student in one of my intuition workshops, she was willing, open and excited as we moved some enormous fear out of her subconscious. She'd been heaping praise upon me as years of debilitating fear left her body and mind. But now, as the addiction to the fear we had so powerfully released together rose up in her, she focused her panic on me. In a matter of days, I had gone from being her saviour to her worst enemy. In truth, I was neither, but the machinations of her ego had her tightly in its grip and she was desperately looking for some relief. I sighed deeply. Oh, I had been here before. I'd reviewed the way I worked a hundred times. What I had come to understand that this was part of the process for some and part of my service and above all else, I had to not take it personally. I train women as spiritual leaders and I identify as a spiritual leader. The world is experiencing a spiritual zeitgeist and many are being called to step up right now to lead this revolution. Spiritual leadership, like all forms of leadership, is often something people are drawn to. It sounds great, right? To lead people out of fear and into love. What a life. Yet, there are some aspects of spiritual leadership that are rarely talked about, but should be. Just as my experience with a student at my workshop shows, spiritual leadership is a complex and multifaceted thing. I hope sharing my understanding might just give those who are on this path of spiritual leadership the courage to prevail. 
These things are, after all, powerful signs that you are genuinely changing things for the better. And the world needs your leadership now more than ever. So how do you know if you're a spiritual leader? And how do you navigate the darker aspects of the past? Here are my top four indicators that you are a spiritual leader and the essential tools you need to stay the course. Number one, people will make a false idol of you. The spiritual leader must live by the adage, let neither compliment nor criticism sway you. The spiritual leader's primary task is to lovingly remind people that whatever they see in them is simply a reflection of what they are. Don't be afraid of your power to serve and inspire others. It's what makes you a spiritual leader after all. But whilst it may feel good to be admired, it is an abuse of power to build your self-worth on other people's opinion of you. You alone need to know the rightness of your path. If I had let the opinion of the woman in my workshop determine my value, I'd have stopped doing anything. I took the opportunity to review and reflect, but I didn't let her feelings stop me. It takes great spiritual fierceness, but if you can do this for yourself, you'll never need external validation. Number two, people work out their stuff on you. Oh golly, I have had more experience with this than seems reasonable, and yet I get it. As a spiritual leader, most often your job is to support people to wake up. And if you've ever had an operation, you'll know that coming out of anesthesia makes people very grumpy. You invite people beyond their limits, and sometimes that is going to make you look like a bad guy. The phase between sleep and awakening where most of our human consciousness is at is a bitch. We have moments of total clarity and then we fall back into the dream. We shoot the messenger at times like this, just as the woman in the workshop did with me, and I have learned not to take it personally. It is not necessary for me to be liked all the time. My job is to be able to hold the space so that others can go through their process of awakening. Not making it all about you is a big sign of spiritual maturity and a vital skill for the spiritual leader. You are out there on your own, number three that is. There is no one or very few people to whom you can turn to for confirmation. As a spiritual leader, you're moving beyond the known into new territory and you are leading from the front. It can feel at times isolating and downright lonely. The reality is most of the world will not get your ideas until they do. And you have to have the spiritual stamina to stay the course. At times when this feels daunting, I remind myself that I can of my own self do nothing. My support is there by tapping into the infinite consciousness that is all around me. Becoming self-reliant is necessary for all spiritual seekers. At some point, we must also turn inwards to meet ourselves as God or the infinite. Whilst we can call on others for support, ultimately, being able to develop self-reliance will allow you to maintain your path of service in the highest and clearest way. I was confident in my capacity to support the woman at my workshop through her process, and although I checked in with my fellow trainers, I knew that my course of action was correct. I trusted myself because I had prioritized developing my capacity to trust myself, yeah? So even though I'm saying trust myself there, if you know anything about the work that I do, what I'm really saying there, and I didn't include in the article, is that I'm learning to trust that I am God. Okay, so your mission, number four, your mission is bigger than your comfort zone and it can get quite exhausting. Yep, comfort, human comfort is probably a thing of the past. The true leader leads by demonstration and you'll quickly learn that if you are not walking your talk, then things fall apart. The leader is constantly moving themselves and others into new ground and that means there isn't time to indulge fears. Sorry, five minutes of self-pity, that is it. That's what my gorgeous women of the third level get. Some days they, they get three minutes. We live in an extraordinary time and as a leader in this age of accelerated awakening, you don't get much downtime. You must be unafraid of your power to lead and yes, that can often feel way outside of your comfort zone. To be willing to stand up and shine so brightly that you allow others to find the light within them, even on days when you'd rather stay in bed, that can often feel too big. But it isn't. And in reality, if this path has chosen you, then there isn't much you can do to argue with it. You do not say no to God. For me, it is a privilege. I say yes to all the good and the bad. As for the woman directing her rage at me, well, she's now a leader in my institute. On the other side of her fear was her infinite self, and it was my privilege to witness her awakening. All I had to do was to remember not to take it personally. Okay, so that is my article. I'll share the link if you would like to have a look at it in print. Um, and if you'd like to share it or add a comment, that would be amazing.
thing so it gets far and wide um, it's very fun to read it out loud so thank you for letting me do that and it's really just such an important thing to keep in mind if you are a spiritual leader and and really pretty much in this anyone in this group is if you are called to not sit inside your own fear limits if you are called regardless of what you're employed to do or what you're paid to do if you're called to question things and to look at things differently then you really do identify or need to identify as a spiritual leader and I remember Tammy when you and I when you interviewed me for your um, series we talked a lot about this and it was such a great interview with you you're such a great interviewer your enthusiasm is so gorgeous and you were we were talking about how if a woman awakens it's really her responsibility to lead because there's so many that will be changed by her and her community whether that's her family or a bigger community and that that it's it's not not our job to sit on our amazingness we were made to be glorious and it's so important that we're willing to step into that role of leadership if we're called to do so and that's why it's so important that we meet our sister wounds and we overcome all of our fear of supporting our fellow sisters on this path because the idea of together we rise is not it's not just a nice idea it's it's absolutely an energetic truth that if we are able to look at um, and Tammy, remember, remind me to ask you to share that link with me so we can share it with people if it's still available. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, we make more energy available as we go together towards that shared goal and that shared vision. And Lisa's just been talking about this all over the internet today is the idea of, of that community over competition is actually our truth. It's not, that's not just a nice idea either. It's actually the way we were raised to be and that it's in our DNA and it's, and it's absolutely um, the antithesis of everything we've been taught about who and what we are. And, and if we can create the, that space, then we can contribute to a cult shift and a spiritual shift and, and we can make the world better for everybody it's it's absolutely vital that we see that collaboration and it doesn't have to mean literal collaboration it just means that we hold a generosity you know that generosity of spirit is is a sign of a spiritual leader it's overcoming the jealousy it's overcoming that littleness and overcoming that envy and all of those things that might happen if you see someone in your field doing really well is how do you find generosity inside of your heart and, and actually feel the abundance that, that there is so much power that when we let others um, thrive and we witness that and we support that um, energetically. I don't mean that you have to be all like on their Facebook and loving their stuff. You can if you want to, but more importantly is that you, you know, it's the second law as within, so without what are you holding inside of yourself towards the other and how can you overcome that feeling of lack and expand into gosh we really are on theme today aren't we Lisa's just over there so I'm, I'm <laughs> she's like about to fall asleep it's like 10 15 here people we need to go to bed um so I'm gonna leave it there thank you so much for joining me it's so much fun to read out my writing I really like this article it's really good um and I just want to say on this point that, that this article was rejected by Elephant Journal. I need to tell you that because if you are interested in writing and you feel like you are, um, you know, you're not good enough or whatever it is, I submitted this to Elephant Journal and they rejected it, but they gave me, which Elephant Journal does, which is so awesome, really great feedback. And I took their feedback. They then said, oh, you can submit it to our new platform, which is anyone can publish. And I was like, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to make this article better. And I spent a couple of days rewriting it. And then I submitted it to Savannah East who accepted it. So it was a really um, great opportunity to not take things personally. And in fact, what I got out of submitting to Elephant Journal was some great editorial feedback what they wanted was to weave the story at the beginning through the article which I did and it made it such a more powerful article as a result but I love that that idea that you know I could have gone and made that all about my low self-esteem and I'm not good enough and I got rejected and blah 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 and instead I was like let's turn this into gold what is it that I want and I wanted to be published in more than one place I've been published in Elephant Journal a few times and so I was like okay let's turn this into an incredible opportunity to expand my publication base get more readers who may not have seen me anymore 
and uh, before and to not make this a, a, a fear of rejection but actually to say okay I accessed amazing free editorial support and now I get to make a better article and get it shared somewhere that I'm really proud of um, so yeah I feel like I just dropping that in right there might be helpful for those of you who think that you know spiritual leadership is about being perfect and getting it right because it's not it's just about being willing not to take everything personally in a negative way you know take all the good shit personally but don't let it build up this idea that it's all about you you know come back to humility 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 that is the spiritual leader Mwah. have a beautiful whatever the time it is wherever you are because right now it's 10 15 i can see jackie who just jumped on you and i we need to go to bed because we are hanging out tomorrow can you even believe it we're in the same place yay mwah, mwah, mwah. have a beautiful day evening whatever it is bye